Good evening, everybody. It's October 15, 2024. I have a couple of questions and answers here um, that I located on Quora that I thought were interesting to share with you. Um, this is Lorraine Alternative Homesteading, exposing one criminal at a time here in rural Kentucky. Well, here's one question. I hope everybody's doing well tonight. One question, of course, th these are the kinds of people that we're dealing with. Are narcissists demonic? And here's the answer, answer by one individual. Narcissists are demons from hell. Everyone that is or was with a narcissist knows how evil and insidious those people are. They don't care about love, loyalty, or honesty. All they care about is one thing. They need to survive. Narcissistic supply. That's you. That's targeted people. We are their supply. They suck the life out of people until they've got nothing left, no life, energy, or money. Narcissists feed on the energy of others because they are sadistic, emotional predators. They enjoy your pain, suffering, hopelessness, and attention, whether it's positive or negative. All the abuse, lies, manipulation, deception, and confusion are fuel to them. This is all they have to offer. Those demons can only function when they have someone to abuse because they can't be alone. And their fragile ego must feed constantly by destroying others. The more you suffer, the bigger their ego. This is normal and easy for them because they have no soul, no empathy, no remorse or understanding for others. Narcissists are selfish machines. No matter how much you love them, care for them, and support them, no amount of love or effort can change them because they want to live this way. They've made a decision early in their life when they sold their soul to the devil, when they chose to give up on themselves and create this false self, a false persona, which they think is real, and their confused and delusional mind they think that they are kings and queens in a world that exists only in their damaged minds. Damaged people are dangerous because they know how to make hell feel like home. In their sick and twisted mind, you belong to them like a possession, like an object that has its purpose to serve them, submit to them, and worship them. Cough, cough. They are slaves of their own ego, insanity, and toxicity. When you first meet them, you are impressed by their fake charm and manipulated from the very beginning to like them, to submit to them, and to trust them. Those demons can have many forms, and one of their favorite tricks is to play the role of an angel to get you in their toxic trap and make you a victim of their abusive cycle to make your worst nightmare come true. The dream of true love and finally finding your soulmate turn into a never-ending nightmare. Well, that's sort of like moving to Kentucky and finding out that your neighbors are demonic, evil pieces of crap. And all they want to do is steal. They're predators. I'm sure it's happened to you guys, too. So this a question was, are narcissists demonic? And yeah, they are. They're demons from hell, like your stalkers, your neighborhood stalkers. And the people that place us in this disgusting, horrific nightmare of a program. Now, the other question was, is gang stalking scary? And this was a recent, this is a recent question and recent answer. Gang stalking is domestic surveillance. And yes, having your own government carry out illegal operation, which secretly targets civilians is a scary thought, even to those that are, who are not targeted. These operations have been going on for decades. A dramatically expanded version of the exposed, admitted, an illegal cointel pro surveillance, its psychological warfare, and assassination operations. We can see where this ignored tyranny has led us, and all civilians are now face targeting. By these same agencies and organizations, censorship, gun control, psychops carried out on the population as a whole. 
These operations will either soon end or the United States civilians will live under the same tyranny. Hopefully the Dems will fall in this election and the terrorist-like elements that have embedded themselves in all of the intelligence agencies will be routed out and dealt with like the terrorists that they are. And obviously that's what this upcoming election is about. Because the people who are targeting us that have placed us in this disgusting program, all these uh, psychopaths that are placed in positions of authority ruling the country, um, they know, they know that if uh, one individual gets in, I won't say who, but it's definitely not the camel toe. Um, oh, and I'm finding out so much more about her. Uh, go listen to Candace Owen. She's been doing some deep digging into the past of Kamala Harris. Yeah. Oh, and all the lies and interviews and stuff. Oh, my goodness. You should, you should hear what's coming out. But anyway... So the point is that either these operations will end soon or all of the U.S. civilians will live under the same tyranny. So hopefully the Dems will fall in this election and the terrorist-like elements that have embedded themselves in all of the intelligence agencies will be routed out and dealt with like the terrorists that they are. And let's see, there are a couple of comments here on, on this. Yes, they have destroyed my mind and it will never function the same. This isn't happening just by the government now. There are crime rings that have access to the technology through military contractors who just want to make money. And that's true. And, you know, all these little Freemason loser clubs over here, they have access too. Why? Because they've got money. They've got a lot of money because they steal from other people. They've got membership dues and fees. And one person writes, this gang stalking is cruel and unusual punishment. So anyway, the question here was, is gang stalking scary? And yes, it is scary. It's domestic surveillance. It's amazing to think that your own government is carrying out illegal operations to secretly target civilians. And it's not just us now. It's not just the targeted people. It's rolling out to everybody else. Like ooh, some people claim that we're the test subjects, although this has been going on for a couple of decades, right? I mean, I know somebody who's been targeted for 30 years. So anyway, there was... Um, I had asked some questions of uh, ChatGPT. And one of the things that... Let's see here. Uh, let's see. So what are some lesser known tactics used by gang stalkers that most targeted individuals might not be aware of? Uh, this is, again, this is a, a question and answer um, through Quora. The chat GPT, I'm going to save that for another video because it'll be a little, a little bit too long. Now this individual says... I can only speak of the ones that I know of. The higher you are on their watch lists, the more they harass you because they're hoping for money. I told you the little greedy effers. They can't create for themselves, so they have to steal from other people. Go earn your own living, losers. Stop stealing from other people. Karma's coming for you. Their favorite one is to follow you and show up wherever you're eating and then they'll charge their meals to the IRS. They get away with this one because they're taught how to hide this kind of fraud. They say that they're independent contractors. One must follow specific rules to be an independent contractor. It's illegal to say that you're an independent contractor and show no profit from your business. They follow their targets literally everywhere. I'm surprised they don't follow us into the restroom stalls and crawl under the stall to watch us poop and pee. Driving by your house at night over and over and over again. What well, we all know about that, right? We've we got that video recorded. 
revving up their vehicles at you all night over and over again. Yep, yeah, we've got that recorded. Poisoning your animals, taking your animals. I believe that's why we have so many strays away from home. And that that's very true. I mean, it could be the animals that show up on my property. They could be other. Be, they could be stolen from other targeted people, and they're dumped here. For all I know. Waiting down the street or road where you live day after day. Oh yeah, there's somebody parked down the block right now. I guarantee you, right in that pit that they created. Placing vehicles on your street or near your residence to harass you with catching you on camera. You know, like that scarlet biatch who's driving back and forth, photographing me as I'm raking leaves, creating some fake narrative lie. Camera vehicles are easy and cheap. They steal your mail. Oh yeah, I've had my mail stolen here. Calling the security of a large malls that you're there to steal. So the security will follow you around the mall and harass and watch you. Charging their purchases to the IRS of the USA and pretending you're under surveillance, even military-grade surveillance. Peeking in your windows, especially at night. If you fly somewhere telling the airline that you're a terrorist and, and you're there to blow up the plane, the airline employees will then ignore your requests or harass you. Having the air marshals sit near you and stare at you your entire flight. Surrounding you with airline personnel because the airline is told that you're on the flight to blow up the plane. Telling hotel and motel employees that you're there to be a prostitute and solicit their customers. Following you around the entire time you're on vacation and getting people to harass you. Telling bank managers you're at the bank to rob... This is crazy stuff. I mean, do people really believe this stuff? Telling bank managers you're at the bank to rob the bank or credit union when you've been a customer for years and years. Calling up total strangers and telling them you're cheating on them with their wives or husbands and have never seen them in your life. Telling Leos that you're committing crimes when you have not left your house or apartment in days or weeks. Or how about Scarlet? Like, oh, my son-in-law, you know, my, my son-in-law has friends in the, in the, in the sheriff's department and, and, and I'm going to have them call on you. I'm going to have them call on you. My, my son-in-law at the sheriff's office. That's what she does. I guess, you know, mentioning that makes her feel as if she's something that she's not, that she has some kind of credibility when she doesn't by saying that she's associated with somebody who she's actually not associated with. I mean, I guess there are people out there that do that. Telling people you're committing crimes with no evidence. Reporting you did something wrong when you haven't even left your house or apartment. Pretending to be your friend, hoping to get paid by you or their handlers. Having your neighbors tell the military and FBI and sovereigns and law enforcement agencies that when you go outside to water or clean up or pick up your yard and get something out of your vehicles, they just rat on you. Calling you and hanging up or breathing on the phone. I mean, come on. Doesn't that sound like junior high school stuff? Sending bogus emails, blocking your communication systems, banging on your doors, and then running away again. I mean, does this sound like like eight year old stuff? That is usually if you live in an apartment, messing with your cable or electricity, stealing gasoline out of your tank, removing items out of your vehicles, removing change and coins out of your vehicles, constantly looking in your vehicles to look for something that they can use against you. You see their fingerprints on their on your vehicles. They're waiting for you on side of the road, then jumping behind you and tailgating you. They're constantly trying to run you off the road. They're trying to cause you to have an accident. They're picking up everything that you look at or pick up in a store by by following behind you. They call the sheriff or police on you every time you leave your house so they can stalk you. Oh, well, how about them planting trash on, 
on your property and then when you remove the trash so that you can clean and cut the grass should they she just miraculously shows up and calls the police like our tax dollars are hard at work go fight some real crime coppers harassing your kids when they're playing outside scaring your children sending people to bully your children sending people to I can't say this on on day two you know to take your children pretending that they know you to others so they can tell lies about you Showing up wherever you go by getting their nails done, getting a massage, getting a haircut, and charging these to the IRS. Telling the grocery stores that you're, that you're a food or grocery item thief. Managers are so paranoid that they fall for these lies. Store owners need to ask themselves, who's spending money in the store? It certainly isn't the morons on the phone. Telling people that you're a sex worker or some other sex offender. Offering to train your doctors on how to extract information out of you to feed them. They will have information about you so they can sound authentic. Well, how about like my neighbor, Eddie Marks, telling one of my tree guys that I'm crazy and don't pay people. Well, guess what, Eddie effing Marks? That's called defamation. There are laws against defamation. People win huge lawsuits against defamation. And it doesn't matter if you're a fucking paid informant. You're still a criminal who is breaking the law. Telling people, offering to train your doctors, exchanging your lab work for bogus lab work by getting one of the laboratory personnel to give them your samples, removing items out of your yard or lawn or porch. Oh, that happens all the time. Interfering with your place of worship, church, spiritual center by telling them that you're there for prostitution <laughs> purposes. Oh my goodness. Flying over your home every 15 to 30 minutes to annoy you and harass you. Yep, check mark. Preventing you from getting a job by telling your potential employees you're a sexual predator or a child molester or something really despicable. You never did that. And there's no evidence. Preventing you from getting sober or drug-free or messing with your doctors by having them report on you. There's another to get you to lose your jobs. Preventing you from going to AA, NA, or OA. If you have a single family dwelling, they'll use military-grade surveillance on you with noises, etc. They'll break into your storage unit and move things around or take them and then replace them later. They'll break into your house and go through your items. You know, like my new pants that I'm wearing here. Actually, they're not new. Well, they're a month old, but I've, I've been buying all of my clothes used um, on eBay because there are a lot of young people out there, you know. They're amazing. Like, they'll wear something once or twice, and then they'll sell it on eBay, and then I'll buy it from them. <laughs> so, yeah, so they cut two holes in the back of my new leggings. That's okay, losers. Karma's coming for you. If you rent, they'll get the landlords to evict you by harassing the landlords. The landlords are too stupid to tell them to grow screw themselves. They promise the landlords kudos that will never happen. Ignorant landlords. This is a fraction of what these morons do. Remember, they don't have a soul. They have a spirit that is sold over and over to the dark side. So, these are what I know about. There are plenty of other diabolical and evil things they do. You know, like cutting your tree roots, digging them out, stealing your soil and, and rock and stuff, and exposing all the roots of all your trees. They have a manual that tells them what to do next. They follow their handler's instructions to the letter of their manuals. Yeah, like one of our handlers here is the county lawyer little weenie boy yeah that's what he is little weenie boy he's a liar he's a narcissist he's got that smirky smile when you talk to him and then he gaslights you stonewalls you uh doesn't fulfill FOIA requests 95 percent of this is illegal that's why it's so important that you document what they do to you to your kids and to your animals Everything you can document is important. And that's why every targeted person should have a YouTube channel and post at least a couple of videos. Just get it out there 
It doesn't matter yet how many subscribers you have. Somebody left a comment that, oh, you have, you know, this many subscribers. Well, I didn't start with that many subscribers. I had 10 at one time. I had 30, I had 40, I had 50 at one time. And the thing is, you're not going to get a lot of subscribers if you're not posting videos. So you got to keep posting videos so to get the message out there. So remember, the coppers are working with these gang stalkers. Telling the cops only gives them ammunition to use against you because they immediately put you on blast to the gang stalkers and other coppers, corrupt ones especially. They do the same thing as gang stalkers. When you turn them in every day or when you have something to document, you build a case against them. These are their favorite things to do. They like to take away your jobs, call you a sexual predator, or show up where you are. Well, I'll tell you, when I lived at 52 Sutton Drive, Manalip, New Jersey, in a home I lived in for 30 years as the original owner... And all the people who lived next door and around me lived there the same amount of time until their kids grew up and they moved away. And after they moved, all the paid informants moved in. And they wouldn't be there more than six months, nine months, or a year. And then they'd move again. Yeah, and those are the predators that come into your neighborhood. So those are the ones that you have to look out for. Yeah, so, oh, the narrative that they were spreading about about me to my neighbor that I lived next door to all those years was that I was a skinny little whore. I was a skinny whore, I guess because I was a divorced single mom, right? I, they had, I had a disease that they didn't want to catch because I was the first person on my block to get divorced. But I wasn't the last one. <laughs> Maybe I, I had a trend going on because then my... Next door neighbors, when you're looking at my house to the right, then they got divorced. Then uh, Ronnie and Doreen diagonally across the street, then they got divorced. There are a whole bunch of other people that got divorced and moved away. I got divorced, but I still live there. So I guess they didn't like that, right? So anyway, so this Q&A involves the question... What are some lesser-known tactics used by gang stalkers that most targeted individuals may not be aware of? And what I've read to you, if you have tactics that they've used on you, leave a comment down below so we can update this. Um, well, obviously, you're going to be targeted differently if you're a man or a woman, depending on your age, depending on how long you're in the program, who put you in the program, if you have pets, if you don't have pets, if you own property or house, or if you rent, you get targeted differently. I've been saying this for years. People who um, own land, property, or you own your house, even if you own, like, um, even if you're renting a house, they're going to target you differently if you're renting a house than if you're renting an apartment. Because I know a lot of targeted people that actually rent a house, and it's very different than, uh, than an apartment where you're surrounded by people like upstairs, next door, downstairs, etc. When you're renting a house, you're targeted very similarly to if you own a home, except that they don't do as much a physical damage because when you're renting a house, um, you're not the one that's paying the property taxes. You're not the one generally that has to perform all the maintenance on the house. It's usually the person that you're renting from. But when you own property, the only person that's doing the maintenance and paying for it is you, like me. So all the damage that they do around here that I have repaired, replaced, like I have now replaced my water heater. I'm only here five years. Replace the water heater. Um, I lost two iPads. Um, my lamp twice. Uh, let's see, I had to replace a humidifier, a dehumidifier, uh, my washing machine, if I didn't say that already, uh, all the windows on my cat's nonprofit building, you know, the one that I spent $30,000 on, yeah, they destroyed all the windows, I replaced them, and now they did the same thing all over again. So, yeah, so I'm recording this. This is evidence, this is an evidentiary video, and all you people that, that aren't in on it, you're all going to get exposed because I'm not going to shut up anytime soon. And neither should you. Um, it's important to 
but possibly have an interview with somebody who, who has um, more subscribers than you do so that you can spread the word, get the message out there because we all need to stand together on this. This is happening to millions of people, millions. It's asset stripping, it's real estate mobbing, it's pet experimentation, human experimentation, human trafficking. It's vile, it's disgusting, it's satanic, it's ritualistic. And I've said it in one of my videos uh, that I posted last year that we are the sexual paraphilia for these predators. They're the ones that are pedos. They're the ones that are perverts. They're the ones that won't close their damn legs. They're the ones that are stalking and harassing and mobbing and stealing. They're the ones that are surveilling you. They're the peeping Toms and the peeping Janes and the stalkers and the headlighters. They're the ones with the noise campaigns. They're the ones that spread defamation and slander and libel. They're the ones that stalk your, your YouTube channel, your Facebook, your Twitter. They're the ones. They are projecting every kind of loser personality trait that they possess onto every targeted person. They don't own their own shit. And karma is coming for them. And I say that often, but it's true. And I've said it before. Sometimes you can be their karma. And by being their karma, by you being part of their karma, is by exposing them by name when you have evidence, when you have evidence of them not following the law, of them breaking the law, of them harassing you, of them screaming at you. Uh, when you have the evidence, then you can call them out by name. Just like my neighbors. When uh, the county sheriff, the, the lawyer, the county lawyer at the time wouldn't prosecute them, wouldn't give me a restraining order. When the kangaroo court judge here wouldn't give me a restraining order. When the sheriff's department wouldn't accurately document it. What else do you do? Neighborhood wars on A&E, April 11, 2023. That's right. Hey, you can't get a big better audience than that, right? So that's why you got to call these people out. And then for you guys, if you have evidence of your neighbors harassing you, you have to have it. You have to have it on video. You have to, and it has to be more than once. Stalking is not just one or two times. Although you can say that somebody is harassing you. When you have told them to stop, to never contact you again, and they persist. So this is the stuff you need to document. And when you send them letters, when you send them a cease and desist, and you send it certified registered mail, you make a photocopy of the outside of the envelope, you copy everybody that you need to, like the sheriff's department, the police department, the county lawyer. And if they want to do nothing... You have the evidence there that they are complicit, that they're violating their oaths of office. And then, yes, get with a citizen journalist. Contact Richard Moore. Contact one of, um, there are so many people online. You just, we just have to find them. Create your own YouTube channel. Post a video a day or a video a week documenting what's happening take photos of your items and show how the, how it's being whittled away and the destruction of it and plus these losers they like to cr take credit for their for their stuff so you get yourself a black light and then you take photos of things and you expand the photos and invariably you will find their signature it's usually done by the Freemason Loser Club. That's what I call the Freemason Loser Club. Because most police departments are Freemasons. Um, I, recently, somebody told me that all judges are Freemasons. Is that, whether or not that's true, I have no idea. I don't know if, it's that, if that's true. 
But even if half of them are, that's significant because we know for a fact that Freemasonry, the underlying dynamic of Freemasonry is Satanism. And Satanism is ungodly. Satanism steals joy. They are the vampires, the psychic vampires of the universe. So anyway, hope you enjoyed this. It, leave your questions and comments down below. If you have any tactics that are used on you that weren't listed here, leave them down below. We can add to them and it helps other people. Um... And let me see, was the other the other question was, is gang stalking scary? And yeah, it is scary. It's scary to think that these intelligence agencies are harassing innocent people for profit. Anyway, this is Lorraine Alternative Homestead. I'm gonna sign off for now.